What's up everybody? Today we're gonna do the second video in my series on the bicycles that I own. Today is gonna be about my Peugeot. So the story starts, I was down at Blimp City Bike and Hike in the valley, I was looking for some parts for my bike count, and the owner said, you know, I have this friend who has a tall French bike that I think you might be interested in. So he gave me his number. Um, a couple weeks later, I find myself standing in this guy's back driveway in a sea of bicycles. He had a yard full of bicycles, his sunroom was full of bicycles, his garage had wheels hanging from the rafters everywhere. Turns out he was a scrapper, he'd go to the scrap yards and scoop up all the bicycles before they could get uh, destroyed and recycled. So he would fix a lot of them up for the neighborhood kids and stuff like that, and then he had his own favorites. Interesting characters you could imagine, we talked for a while. And then he showed me the Peugeot. Uh, the owner of Blimp City Bike and Hike had told me it was in a little rough shape, and it was. It had a um, bent front wheel, which was an aluminum wheel. The rear derailleur was busted. It had no seat and no seat post. And it was all around just generally a little dirty, but there was something about it. I just, I thought it looked awesome. You know, I can't remember how much cash I had in my pocket, but you know, I was curious what it would cost. And he, he said, how about 30 bucks? So for 30 bucks, I was definitely in. Um, took it home and then I set about trying to find the parts to build it back up into something cool. So the bike is a Peugeot PH10L. I believe it's probably from 1984. I think they built frames like this, which is a Carbolite 103 frame from 82 to 84, somewhere in that era. Uh, Carbolite is Peugeot's own tubing. It's not very expensive, but from everything I read and from my experience, the ride quality is really good. So a little heavier of a bicycle, but a decent bicycle. There was kind of a mini um, aero bike boom in the early 80s, and this is the first bike I've probably ever seen with an internally routed cable. They made a nicer version. It was a Centennial version. That was the 100th anniversary of Peugeot. They actually routed the um, gear shifting cables internally too. Besides that, it was really just a different head badge and um, a different, slightly different paint scheme as far as I could tell. But this has um, a simplex group set. Um, it's actually branded Peugeot on parts of it, which is kind of cool. I know they were trying to go all French for the Centennial version and this one's mostly French itself. Um, it's, with the aero boom, it's kind of cool because it's all internally brazed instead of a lugged frame. You know, it's kind of the more modern look. All the tubing has more of an aero profile. It's very narrow, aero profile on the back stays and all the stuff like that. So yeah, just kind of a um, interesting bike. The rear wheel is what was called a heliochromatic. And if you read uh, certain websites, Sheldon Brown, for example, they say they weren't very good. Uh, their, their selling point was the ease of removing the freewheel. And they said that was good because when you broke a spoke, it was easy to take off and change, but they were famous for breaking spokes. So kind of, you know, ironic. It's easy to take off, but you're gonna break all your spokes. I actually put probably my first 4,000 miles on that rear wheel before it gave out, and I was replaced with uh, a newer one. So as I went about trying to build the bike back up, I found out that Carbolite frames had a unusually sized seat post. I got really lucky that there just happened to be one on eBay. Uh, new old stock, so in perfect condition. I think I paid maybe 20 bucks for it. I bought just a Shimano uh, rear derailleur, a modern one, put it on, worked fine. This, the front wheel and the seat, I started to look up um, front wheels online. I had no clue at the time what anything cost. And I saw like, even to get a cheap basic one, you know, you're around 100 bucks. Well, I remember the scrapper also had this Schwinn World Sport that he only wanted 25 bucks for. Called him up, went back and picked that up. So I actually threw the front wheel from the Schwinn on there. That's still the one that I'm running on this, actually. I put the Schwinn saddle on there, but uh, I've since changed that out with one that I picked up, a um, Contour Royale. It kind of has a vintage look and the color goes perfect with the uh, paint scheme. So yeah, I basically started to YouTube stuff and taught myself how to get the gears and everything set up correctly. And a week after I got it built up, I took it on a century ride, performed great. I had, you know, I loved it. And then from then on, it was like almost the only bike I rode. I just rode it everywhere, rode it off-road, every possible place I could, and still enjoy riding it to this day. Like I said, I finally ended up destroying the rear wheel. I think, you know, just, you know, I had 4,000 miles on it. 
the old owner who knows what they put on it since the 80s and then the fact that they didn't have a good reputation anyways but you know i can't complain about it for that kind of mileage one thing kind of amazing is this bike still has the original bar tape on it it's this weird uh, ribbon tape that was popular at the time and it's kind of i wonder why it was ever popular because it's not grippy and it's not cushiony i have new tape for this that i've wanted to replace it with but i just haven't been able to bring myself to do it yet, even though it's not very functional, I just, it looks cool. So as I've gotten more into other vintage bikes and building bikes up the way I want to, and I kind of like the Neo Retro build, you know, once you get used to Shimano STI levers, it's a little harder to go back to the down tube shifters. But I still take it out once in a while and I wanted to take it for a ride today, so I figured I'd make a video about it. But I did want to give it a once over because I haven't ridden it since late last fall uh, as I'm recording this, it's early spring. Jean Peugeot founded Peugeot in the mid 19th century as a manufacturer of water mills. He ended up using those profits to start a steel works and then in 1882, Cycles Peugeot was founded out of that company. They are the same company that later made cars, but those two divisions split in the 1920s. The family always saw the importance of sponsoring racers and they won the World Sprint Championship in Copenhagen in 1896 on a Peugeot penny farthing. In 1905, they won their first Tour de France, and their factory team is the winningest factory team in the history of the Tour de France. Uh, they were actually one of the last factory teams to survive as a sponsor. They went all the way till 1986 when economics really hit them hard, and they actually ran out of money in the middle of the season. They always tried to focus on using French parts, even when a lot of the other companies had switched to the Italian stuff like Campy, They're using, you know, strong light cranks, simplex group sets, and Mavic, Mavic brakes. But like a lot of companies, they weren't above buying handmade Italian bikes and painting them to look like um, factory bikes for some of their high-end races. Uh, they even used Mazzy bikes for a while. They were in the American market until 1990. So yeah, I'm not so much of a retro grouch that I'm gonna sit here and pretend like SCTI levers are not the superior technology. They clearly are. But I'm amazed at how fast the muscle memory goes back to being able to use down tube. I do find myself shifting less though. You know, you pull up to a stoplight, you're like, eh, that gear's good enough. Of course, with the STIs, I'm always gonna be in the perfect gear and have the perfect cadence. But uh, yeah, on hills sometimes, you're like, eh, I guess I'll stick that gear out. I also wonder why, if, it might be why I have so many good Strava segments on this bike, because you just toughed it out in such a hard gear, you just really had to race it up there. But also, this bike just does have an aero aggressive stance, and I still think that has made some of my times on the flat with this bike pretty quick. But yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but this bike just makes me smile. I just just love being on it. Um, and I kind of thought I'm just going to feel kind of weird after the winter being on my gravel bike mostly, even getting on any road bike after a winter on wider tire, you know, more slack bike, you know, usually feels weird. But I got out on this and I just felt great. I don't know. It's probably something I'll always just keep, keep just doing enough maintenance to keep it running, you know.